Hi guys, what is up? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Kaya. For today's video, I'm going to be reacting to unpopular Taylor Swift opinions. I asked you guys on my community page to leave your personal opinions, unpopular opinions, because I think at the end of the day, no matter how much you love an artist or honestly anything, you're going to have opinions that not everybody is going to agree with. So I thought it would be fun to react to others and kind of give my two cents on how I feel about these opinions. Before we get into the video, I have to give a little like disclaimer because Taylor Swift is such, obviously she's like the biggest pop star at the moment and will probably go down in history as one of the biggest pop stars of all time. With that, she reaches so many people. She has such a diverse audience and, you know, from children to literally adults, like she reaches everybody. And so everybody is going to relate and feel differently when they listen to her music and her songs and how they feel about the era's tour. And so I think with that, there is no right or wrong like opinion, like it's all just personal, which I love. So anyways, without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, the first one is Red is the most underrated album. I could agree and disagree with this one. Red, I became a Swifty during the Red era. And so Red holds such a special place in my heart. Um, but I do feel like, especially after Taylor's version with Red, I feel like the all too well 10 minute version from The Vault is only associated with Red, Taylor's version, or just the Red album in general. There are so many other amazing songs on Red and I feel like we don't talk about them enough because we have the all too well 10 minute version, which is rightfully a lot of people's favorite song, like favorite Taylor Swift song ever. And so in a sense, I feel like Red is talked about in all too well 10 minute version in that area. But other than that, I don't feel like the other songs and the other topics are discussed about Red, like Treacherous or Sad, Beautiful, Tragic. Like there are so many other songs on there that are just masterpieces, but I feel like they're not talked about because we have all too well. So I definitely feel that Red could potentially be both like underrated and overrated in a sense. Not that All Too Well is overrated, it just is talked about a lot because it's a beautiful song, but then you leave out the rest of Red's <laughs> discography because it's, you know, you have All Too Well. So anyways, I agree and disagree with this at the same time. Okay, next opinion is Fearless Over Speak Now. This one is really hard for me because Fearless and Speak Now are ranked very similar in my opinion. I love Fearless and I love Speak Now, but they aren't like my favorite albums. But Fearless does have really, really amazing songs on it. One of my favorites is Bye Bye Baby, The Way I Loved You, You Have You All Over Me. You All Over Me is such an underrated song. It's one of my favorites to play on the guitar. And so there's just, oh, it's so good. But then you have Speak Now and Speak Now is also just beautiful. And Taylor wrote this album independently. Like they're so different. I feel like, I feel like Fearless is really just like teenager fun stuff. I mean, there is heartbreak, but it's more like she hasn't reached that mature level yet. And then Speak Now is just like everything 19 year olds and it's just, it's it's a lot. It's trauma dumping essentially. I don't know if I would agree with this. I think Speak Now is much more mature. And again, because Taylor did write that independently, I feel like it just sticks out so much more and is truly just a masterpiece. Back to December is overrated. Don't kill me, please. <laughs> I am gonna have to completely disagree with this. I feel like Back to December is not talked as much, like at all. Um, I actually prefer Back to December over Dear John, which I don't know if that's unpopular or controversial. Um, I love Back to December. It's probably my favorite song off of Speak Now. It could change, but that's one of my favorites for sure. And so, yeah, Back to December is not overrated. If anything, it's underrated. Karma featuring Ice Spice isn't bad, but it's not amazing. I feel like that's like perfect. Like I think a lot of people had different opinions on Ice Spice with her collaborating with Taylor. And I think the reason it's so just like interesting and there are so many different opinions and controversial opinions surrounding this collaboration was because like, I don't think any of us would associate Ice Spice with Taylor, like in the same genre, obviously. Um, Ice Spice is obviously talented. I don't really listen to her, but like, I just, 
I would I could never see them collaborating. And so when this collab came out, I think it was like a shock to everybody. And so we were all super interested and confused and also excited to see how this song would sound. For me personally, I prefer the original Karma version. Um, but again, I don't think the Ice Spice version is awful. Like I really don't. I think it's kind of fun. It's quirky. And I like that she incorporated that version on uh, the Ares tour for a few of the shows. I think it's fun. So I, yeah, it's not bad. It's not the best, but it's just fun. I like it. Okay, we have a big opinion coming up next. And this one says, her music is good, but she keeps talking about her relationship with other men, how she was hurt, yada, yada, yada. All other artists does it too, no doubt, but she do it a lot. Um, I think a lot of people don't understand that when an artist writes all their music, like it's all going to be based like personally, like all these things that they're writing about happens to them or happens to someone they know personally. Now we see with like Folklore and Evermore, Taylor kind of explores this fantasy world, but again, she wrote it by herself. So for me personally, I think it's pretty low to tell a successful artist to not write about a certain experience because they talk about it too much and other artists don't. But obviously that is not true when it comes to Taylor. They're gonna pinpoint these certain experiences, these certain songs about one of her exes or whatever and say that's all she writes about. But again, they just have not explored all of her songs. <laughs> songs such as Champagne Problems, You're On Your Own Kid, Stay Beautiful. Like there's just, so, I could go on and on, but none of those songs like reference an ex or anything. Like it's not always about that. And again, I will insert what Taylor says about the difference between men and women and the music industry. There's a different vocabulary for men and women in the music industry, right? Give me an example. Okay, a man does something, it's strategic. A woman does the same thing, it's calculated. Okay, next opinion says, I think Speak Now in the Eras tour should have included Back to December, Mean, and Mine. I think Speak Now, the set list, should have included much more than just Enchanted. I think we can all agree on that. I think Mean would be really, really fun too. I feel like it would fit the Eras tour perfectly just because throughout Tara's life, she has been calculated with every little thing she does. And so I think playing Mean in a sold out stadium, I don't know, I think that's pretty sick. But in the end, the Speak Now set list should have included more than just Enchanted. I guess Long Live is now part of the Speak Now set list, but it wasn't for quite a while. Okay, next up, someone said, I think the Folklore set list is too long on the Eras tour. Now, if I'm thinking straight, I'm pretty sure the Folklore set list is the longest set list out of all the Eras. For me personally, I'm a Folklore girly. I was obsessed with the Folklore set list when I went to the Eras tour. It was honestly, it probably is my favorite era on the Eras tour set list. It's so beautiful. All of my favorite songs were played. My Tears Ricochet, Betty, you had August, Cardigan, Illicit Affairs. Like everything was just perfect for the folklore set list. Now, if you aren't a huge folklore fan, then I could definitely understand where you're coming from if it's a little too long. Again, comparing it back to Speak Now with just two songs. Um, but no, I think it's perfect personally. I love it. Yes, it is the longest, um, era on the eras tour for the set list but i think it's beautiful and again folklore was never like it never had its own tour and so i think taylor really wanted to give its respected time for those eras that were never able to be toured okay next up someone said i don't like speak now taylor's version that much um i'm gonna be completely honest i know this is a very unpopular this is an unpopular opinion what i'm about to say Speak Now is not my favorite Taylor Swift album. I don't, it's, yeah, it's just not something like, it's not the first album I reach for. I love it. Like literally do not get me wrong. I mainly only listen to Taylor Swift. So I obviously listen to Speak Now and I love songs on there, but it's just not like my absolute favorite album. And so I was really excited to listen to Speak Now, Taylor's version to see if The Vault was similar to Speak Now. Um, and I feel like, the vault really was, it was a great vault because I feel like those songs on there really don't fit the Speak Now era that much. And that is why Taylor has included these vault songs because these songs are amazing, amazing songs. But at the time of her writing it and producing this album, it probably was a song that would have fit that aesthetic or genre as 
you know, maybe it would fit a other album better. And so I actually love the vault songs from Speak Now Tears Virgin, Castle's Crumbling, Foolish One, Timeless. Like they're all just so good. I don't know if it's my favorite vault. I don't think it is my favorite vault, but I do love Taylor's version of Speak Now. Okay, we're gonna do one more. The last one is, I don't really like 1989 that much. It's a good album, but her other albums stand out to me more. This is a perfect opinion. This is perfectly fine. Taylor has written 10 albums. She has done several re-recordings. Like there are so much to choose from and pick from. And so when an album is ranked lower, it literally is not to be taken personally at all. I seriously love Speak Now. I listen to it. Now it isn't my favorite album, but it doesn't mean I don't love it. I think a lot of people think when you rank an album like lower, it's like, yeah, they hate it. They hate the era, all of that. I don't hate any of her albums. I listen to all of them. It just Speak Now. I don't resonate with as much and I prefer other albums over that. And so with 1989, I personally don't agree with this one. I love 1989. Some of my favorite songs are from 1989, such as This Love and You Are In Love. And the Vault songs are just chef's kiss. They're so good. Um, so I do love 1989. Okay, that is it for this week's video. Please let me know in the comments down below any of your other thoughts, opinions, unpopular opinions on Taylor Swift. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below and I will see you guys next time. Bye!